There's an order in there. Members, we are now in open session. I will invite the public into the gallery. <coughs> This is my, my great, uh, my great nephew. Yeah, obviously, yeah. That went down well. Good that we They've already had requests for a couple of baby groups. <laughs> Everyone, welcome to today's <laughs> meeting of the Public Accounts Committee. <clears throat> Mobile phones must be set to airplane mode and on silent or turned off. It is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere with assembly recording. The session has been recorded in video and audio and can be accessed live by way of online streaming either on the assembly website or on Democracy Live. The use of electronic devices is permitted, and members of the public are welcome to connect to Wi-Fi. To do this, you engage airplane mode, then manually switch on Wi-Fi by way of your setting. I am content with that. I move to item one, which is uh, apologies. I have received apologies from the chairperson, Ms Boyle. Are members aware of any further apologies? If not, I move to agenda item two, minutes of the meeting of the 24th of February 2016. Members, the minutes of the last meeting can be found on page five <coughs> of your electronic packs. Are you content for the draft minutes to be signed into the record? Agreed. And I do that. Move on to agenda item three, matters arising. Correspondence received from the Audit Office regarding an update on Training for Women Network. Members of page <coughs> nine of your electronic packet, <coughs> you'll find correspondence received from Richard in response to correspondence sent to Mr. Dallet, that's me by the way, dated the 1st of July 2015 from the Training for Women Network, which Richard has also included. In response to this letter, the committee referred the matter to the Audit Office for further investigation. Kieran, perhaps if you remind the committee what the concerns were around and what you found in your initial investigations on this matter. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, the main problem, uh, I think, outlined, I think, was outlined quite well by the Training for Women Network, was that there were delays in uh, payments on uh, uh, European Social Fund payments. Now, the difficulties, I think, were well aired at the, the Dell Committee. <coughs> uh, the Department acknowledged there was a problem and uh, remedial action uh, was taken. Uh, one of the things alluded to in the, the letter was uh, there were insufficient staff in the Department to actually do vouching. Uh, that's been remedied. One of the, the issues with the ESF, uh, and it is a uh, there is a very tight rule book on European Social Fund. It requires 100% vouching. Uh, they weren't able to achieve the 100% uh, the vouching, and it's usually pre-payment vouching, in other words, before payments go out. Uh, and an internal audit report was critical. Uh, the Europe then had sort of withheld funding. Uh, what had happened then is uh, the department put another scheme into ES7, and that's totally <coughs> legitimate. Uh, and um, there was also some action taken to, to speed up the payment process. Uh, I think we're generally content uh, with what has gone on. We'll be keeping an eye on it. There are other issues raised in here about um, value for money and uh, the way overheads are dealt with. In the, um, in the scheme, um, and uh, the, tra the letter from uh, the Trend for Women Network referred to uh, a 40 per cent markup. That was actually introduced <coughs> to simplify things, so uh, in other words, uh, there's the actual direct cost from the scheme and uh, a standard 40 per cent markup for overheads. Uh, so I think that was done with a view to streamlining the system and reducing <coughs> bureaucracy. We don't have any huge concerns about value for money in it, but uh, as always, we'll be keeping an eye on it. 
Uh, we'll be looking at transactions uh, in the next month or two as part of our annual audit. And if there's anything else emerges, uh, you know, we'll, we'll report back to the committee. Do members have any contribution to make? Members, do you agree to note this correspondence? Agreed. And that the audit office provides a further update if necessary at a later date. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Now, uh, another piece of correspondence <coughs> from Mr. <coughs> e. A. McManus regarding the Charity Commission NI. And uh, Ross recently declared yes. an interest in T. A. McManus letters. Uh, Members, at page 12 of your electronic packs, you will find further correspondence received from Mr McManus, <coughs> dated the 4th of February 2016. Members can advise you that this is the third time since December we have considered correspondence from Mr McManus. I understand that the situation has not changed since this matter was initially brought to your attention in January, and that pending the outcome of an Attorney General's appeal, the Audit Office will update us at a later date on the outcome and if any further action from the committee is appropriate. Mr McManus has asked us for an estimated time for this, which I'm sure members will agree is beyond our control and therefore unable <coughs> to advise him on this at this stage. Here in I see Mr McManus is also now referring to the behaviour of CCNI. I understand the Audit Office would not consider looking at this and this would be a matter for the Ombudsman? Uh, well, it depends what the issue is. If it's, say, the behaviour of officials, that, that's not something we adjudicate on. So uh, if there is an issue there, I'm not saying whether there is or there isn't, uh, we wouldn't be the right authority to deal with it. Okay. Uh -huh. Members, do you agree to note this correspondence? I suggest that a further letter is issued to Mr McManus, highlighting again that we will be unable to provide any further response on this matter until all legal action has been completed, and that we are unable to provide an estimated date for this updated response, as any pending legal action is beyond our control. John, could we also put in a, a sentence in there that if his matter relates to the behaviour of the CCNA, that would be a matter for the Ombudsman? But if it relates to financial um, anything, then, then that may be a matter that the audit office could look into. Here, uh, well, we're talking about the finances here of a charity. Um, in other words, uh, it'd be only if there's a public money huh. issue. Um, I think issues have been raised with the cost of the charity commission. But, but do, we, do we understand when he talks about the behaviour of the CCNA, <coughs> do we know whether he's talking about actual behaviour or is he talking about public finances? Uh, well, I don't know, but um, just taking the wording as is, uh, I think it's, it's behaviour he's talking about here rather than public finances. Now, there's a lot of earlier correspondence. Yeah. On about where he goes into all their issues, um, and I think um, I think I said last week uh, we are the auditors of uh, CCNI, uh, but um, we certainly wouldn't get brought in a live case. Chair, uh -huh. do you want me to comment for clarity or just shut up? Both. I never, Ross, would tell you to <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Most unparalleled. <laughs> Man. But you'll have to be have to use your own guidance and what yourself. you say. No, no, I'm aware of that. I mean, I have declared an interest. Uh, yes. So I could answer the question, but in the circumstances, I won't. All right. <coughs> I don't know, so I can't advise you. But, Mr. Sheldon, I fill the suggestion if, if there are uh, administrative issues, and as the auditor has indicated, it's not a rule for him; it's a rule for the the ombudsman. So I think it would be helpful if we. Put that into that. the letter that if it is um, administrative issues, there may be a role for the ombudsman to uh, uh, investigate. You know, behaviour that he's complaining about. Clark, do you follow that? Okay, thanks. Now, <coughs> uh, the next piece of correspondence. 
uh, <coughs> correspondence from Deti, accounting office, regarding the disqualification of Janice Michaelis. Members of page 3 of the table <coughs> packs will find correspondence dated the 29th of February from Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investments Accounting Officer, Mr McCormick. Mr McCormick has informed the committee that the former Chief Executive of the events company, Janice McAleese, offered a director's disqualification undertaking to the department on the 18th of January for a period of 14 years. Members should note that the 14 years is a year short of the maximum period of 15 years, which is in recognition of her acceptance of the case against her at an early stage, saving costs on court. <coughs> a press release from the department has also been included uh, for your attention. Kieran, do you have any comments to make on this? No, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, press release, you'll see there's 27 points on the charge sheet. It's quite <coughs> extensive. Uh, 14 years is um, almost the max. But, uh, seriously, I suppose the other, there are other uh, proceedings still live on this. This is the first one to come through the process. Okay. Members, are you content to note this correspondence? Yeah. Yes, Mr Chairman. Uh, some of us, uh, there was a press release went out about this. Is that it? I mean, is that uh, obviously Mrs. Megalise has been debarred for 14 years? But is that it as far as she's concerned? Uh, I think not, uh, because there, there's uh, also uh, other live inquiries. Right. So they're still ongoing. Those oh, are still ongoing. Yeah. Okay. All right. John, can I seek clarity from the committee as to whether we explored the daddy why it took eight years for the director's disqualification to kick in? Um, that has been documented, but uh, you, 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 you did cover that fairly strongly in, your, in your own report. That was actually one of the key key points. That okay. that, that, that was a very long point. <coughs> Perhaps it might be useful to repeat it because there's elements of the media obviously don't understand that the public account <coughs> could not have uh, got involved in this at any earlier stage than they did. But leave it at that. <coughs> Move on to agenda item four correspondence. You'll be happy to know there's no new correspondence to discuss. Members, for the remaining items of business, it is necessary that we move into closed session. Are members content that we now move to closed session? Agreed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly, Committee Room 29.